Good morning, Public Affairs. Missy speaking. Hi, Missy. Uh, this call's being recorded. Um, I would like to ask you a question about your mobile electronic warfare training, training system. Uh, can I get your name, please, ma'am? It, yes, it's Linda Little Bear. Okay. Well, one moment, please, ma'am, and I'll let you speak to the ex subject matter expert. Okay. Hi, Leanne. Uh, this is being uh, uh, recorded. Just uh, it'll probably go on YouTube. And my name's Linda Littlebear, and I was wondering what your mobile electronic warfare training system is, because it does take a big part of the uh, the uh, Olympic Peninsula here, the mountains and stuff. What exactly is that, and can it harm human beings? Well, the Navy did complete an environmental assessment um, at the end of August. Uh, regarding this this type of training, I will let you know that this type of training in general is not new to the area, um, but it has been fairly simulated um, so far since we you know actually don't have the equipment in place. Um, but essentially, what this training is is the aircraft. So start over. So the signal that is emitted from so the radio waves emitted from the the truck, which is essentially like a TV news satellite truck, will send a signal up into the air, and the aircraft that are training in the military operations areas will kind of use that signal, try to use the aircraft systems to be able to detect and locate um, where that signal is coming from, identify what kind of signal it is, um, because we know that when they, the aircraft pilots, they go into enemy territory, they could potentially face types of, you know, electronic threats. Um, and so these pilots are kind of using this training to be able to, you know, figure out what kind of signal this is and where it's coming from and then in their head have to, you know, learn to figure out, okay, now how do I, you know, counter that? So essentially that's what this training is for. Okay, but it says it has electromagnetic radiation exposure. Now that's dangerous. Well, I will say that electro radi it does sound scary, but electro electromagnetic radiation, that term in general, is not the same thing as nuclear radiation or any other kind of radiation. It essentially is radio waves. So the emitters that are being used are going to be operating um, on the same frequency bands that are similar to other satellite communications, Wi-Fi devices, you know, cordless phones, and Bluetooth. So it's essentially similar to those types of frequencies that are being used. Um. <laughs> I, I just, why didn't the, why wasn't the public uh, first let, not, I mean, I know that electronic war, warfare started when the Cold War started a long time ago, but with this radiation and stuff and what we're getting from Fukushima, I mean, I know it's not the same as nuclear, but, um, I mean, is it like an x-ray? I mean, could you compare it to that? I don't have that analogy that I can make personally. Um, I the only information I have is that the frequency bands that are, you know, that will be used um, by by these trucks that are essentially like TV news satellite trucks um, are, you know, along the same lines as, you know, satellite other satellite communications and some of those types of Wi-Fi devices, as well as some of the radar, you know, weather radar systems. Right. Is, is, is this have something to do with all these towers that are being set up around here, too? I personally don't know of any towers that are being set up, but the Navy doesn't have any plans to construct anything in those areas. I'm not sure what those towers might be for. Okay, because, um, I mean, I it does say that there's uh, no danger to animals or people unless they are inside a pie-shaped area within about 100 feet of the emitter. So what if someone, an animal or a person is inside 100 feet of the mobile emitter and you don't see them. Well, we, will do, we do have operators that will be essentially operating the equipment as well as kind of monitoring the area for such things. Um, there will be, it's kind of a roped off area and there will be signs posted around this safety zone that we have that will you know, alert people that there is something going on in that area associated with Navy training. Um, if somebody does, you know, in fact, kind of go beyond that safety uh, zone and, you know, doesn't literally listen to the signs that are posted, um, 
the, the operators will be trained to kind of keep a lookout for any of the animals or people that are in the area. And if they, if people do kind of wander into the area and refuse to leave, even after being talked to, um, we're, I mean, essentially the equipment will all be immediately shut down if anybody comes even close to it. And um, if people refuse to leave or the animals decide not to stay around or decide to stay around in that area for uh, any length of time, that, you know, we'll just move the equipment somewhere else to continue the training. Yeah, because I see it also says that there's homes that are at least a mile from the nearest, um, you know, the nearest site where you'll be testing, which is kind of scary because, uh, I mean, I, I don't understand why you guys have to do this. This is more than 400 miles. I mean, this this goes uh, all over. This, this isn't just in Washington State either, is it? To my understanding, no. I see that it's in Idaho. I'm looking up stuff while I'm talking to you. Yeah. Uh, and and I, why weren't we let, I mean, why was it just posted in a little bitty tiny article under legal notices? Why weren't we given, you know, our, we the people should be able to have some kind of say so on this. Absolutely. And that's, that's definitely, we weren't trying to hide anything. Um, I will let you know, I mean, we're certainly open to, to improvements all the time in notifications. So we're definitely willing to, to take, you know, suggestions from you on what we could do better next time. We're, I personally don't, you know, wasn't too familiar with all of the publications in the area, and this is a learning process for me personally as well. Um, so if you have suggestions on, on that, I'm, I'm willing to hear them. Um, the, other, the other thing I will let you know is that this type of training um, was previously sort of the concept of it was analyzed in Northwest Training Range Complex. Um, environmental impact statement that was done and completed with public input back in 2010 and this is sort of just this environmental assessment we just completed is sort of an update to that based on you know some updates that were made to the, the technology um, piece of it so this no. EA that was done um, is to, sort of for the actual installation or the you know construction of certain pieces associated with this type of training but this training is not brand new to the area. Like I said, we've just been kind of simulating it for now. And then the qualifications that the pilots are required to have in this type of training, they ha currently they have to travel, you know, over 400 miles to get to Idaho to be able to do it because they have the equipment there. Yeah, I saw that. And now we have low flying aircraft over our area every night. It sounds almost like, and it's definitely military planes. There's cows, there's goats. I have goats. There's horses next door. There's cows across the street. Is there like a timeline where we can say, no, don't do this? I mean, you're going to do it, but is there like, um, you know, how, I just wish that there was a public event where all the public could come in and say something. Um, is what instead of being put in the legal notices of a newspaper, I mean that's kind of shady if you ask me, um, and that's where it was found. So what my question is is why can't we the people you know sit down and have a talk with you guys and 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 voice our complaints and stuff, especially about. You know, I don't know if you go to Sats up all the way to Sats up and stuff, but there's a lot of military flying over us all the time. None of us know what's going on. We, we wouldn't know real danger from you guys training at this point. Understand. Where, where exactly are you? I'm, I'm in the Olympic Mountain Peninsula. Okay, I, I'm just trying to figure out where, I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, where in the Olympic um, I'm I'm close to the rainforest over uh, in Mason County. Mason County, okay. But we hear there's aircraft all the time, and they're headed to the uh, um, I call them the two towers. You know, the ones that were supposed to be a nuclear power plant, but the oops thing happened, or whoops, and they never made it. So they've turned into a training ground for the military, basically. Because you hear munitions go off and everything else. Even where I live, we can hear munitions go off from Satsup. Okay. So, you know, my question is, are you guys doing that stuff there, too? It, I can't confirm. I, to my understanding, no. And it's not associated with this electronic warfare training. 
Okay. I just think anything with radioactive, electronic, and magnetic, those three words together are scary. And I think that, you know, maybe there should be a, maybe you guys could just, just this is my, my humble opinion, set aside a meeting where we could all meet someplace, you know, and, and get input and you could explain this better. I mean, because you can't tell an animal or a bird to leave because you're going to be doing this, you, you know. Absolutely, and like I said, if, if the animal, if they just kind of wander through the area and leave, that's fine. Um, they will not be affected by that because it's not a long period of time. But if the animal chooses to stay, it, it, the equipment will essentially be shut down, and the operators are trained, will be trained to do that. They will, if any life is in the area, they're going to shut that down. So, and then if the animal, like I said, chooses to, to stay, then they will have to, you know, our operators in the truck will move to another location. Okay, so we're going to have wandering trucks all over the Olympic Mountain Peninsula, right? <laughs> Not all over. There are identified sites that were looked at, um, to, and those sites were picked specifically because they're known to be more remote areas that, the, that will hopefully be, you know, there will be less wildlife or humans in there. Okay, because We're not all over. Well, see, I'm I'm looking at the little map there, and a lot of people like to hike and and hunt and fish and etc. And I'm wondering, is this uh, because you're wanting to do this for technology to find your enemy? Are you listening to us too? I mean, is this you know a part of like do you listen to our conversations on the phones and stuff with this? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Uh, are you with this equipment you know that you're doing I know it's for uh, an enemy or a supposed enemy uh, with this information are you guys uh, you know listening to conversations or something since it's like radio waves that we may be having on telephones are you collecting regular people's data as the airplanes and stuff go over that is, that is not what we're doing with with this training no okay has that been done in the past do you know I'm just curious <laughs> I mean, I, I, while well, I got you on the phone, I, I'm just curious, do you guys do that? Or I could, would I have to ask somebody else? I can't answer that. Okay. Um, so, is there any way you think we could have a, uh, you know, because there's logging and fishing and, and stuff all out there, I would just like to know if there's any way we could have a public meeting. I, I can't make that decision. Um, I will definitely take that message down and pass it on up our chain of command. Um, but there's there's no promises I can make that there will be a public meeting there. Okay. Well, I think that since I live in the Olympic Peten Mountain Peninsula, that there should be some kind of, um, you know, y'all, you guys shouldn't put it in legal notices. That's number one, because that just says, okay, you've given your implied consent. Most people don't even look in the legal notices. And, and and by doing that, you, it was kind of a shady way of we the people giving implied consent for this having it done, I, you know. So maybe next time you could take it out in a, a bigger column, you know, like on the front page of a newspaper to let us know these things are happening. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm taking that suggestion, sure. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know if these things will get there but um you know it's kind of scary this is going on i know it's going on and all over the country it's just you know this one kind of got found out about so um you know it's 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 getting kind of scary out there for just us regular civilians not knowing what you're testing and could it harm us and could it harm our animals I understand and we're and to clarify we're not testing anything this is strictly training and this type of training like I said has I mean it, it is done in other parts of the country and it's not necessarily new to this area we've been simulating this type of training um, I mean certain pieces of it are simulated but the aircraft are actually doing this training in this area already so you won't necessarily see anything different are the are the yeah. are foreign troops doing this too because I know we had Germans over us last year training so can you say that again? Are foreign troops involved in with in with you? Are you know like our allies? Are they training with this too? To my knowledge, no. Okay, because I know last year we had Germans that were doing helicopter runs, and they said they were the ones flying too low. Okay, so, I had not heard that. Okay, um, someone from Patty Murray's office actually told me that. So okay. um, that's why I'm wondering. You know, is is do we have other people here training with our soldiers? 
um, with this. So as you, as far as you know of, no. Yeah. Okay. And I can't confirm that, you know, with 100%. That's just me. I, I don't know. Okay. Personally. Well, I appreciate you talking to me. Um, and uh, I do think, I don't know, I think Forks is going to call a city hall meeting. I don't know if you guys are going to attend or not. Um, but the people of Forks aren't very happy. Um, so if, if that does happen, I'm going to be there with questions. I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. And the, the Navy does plan to be at the public meeting that we've been working with with the Forks Chamber of Commerce for next week, Tuesday. Okay, next week, Tuesday? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know what time? 6 to 8 p.m. is my understanding. Okay. I think this should be put out all over the peninsula because this is not just a Forks area. I mean, this goes down into a lot of counties here. You know, this isn't just for Forks. I, I'm looking at the map. It's kind of spooky. Okay. I mean, yeah. so. Um, I, we did not call this meeting, but we were happy to participate in it uh, when we were asked to by the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Local government officials out there. Well, sure, they're concerned. I mean, people are concerned about this. I mean, with when radiation and all kind of things are electromagnetic radiation and and electronic warfare training systems, those words, you know, are kind of scary. And we don't like to be test subjects. So I'm going to let you go. Thanks for talking to me. My name's Linda Little Bear, and like I said, this was being taped, and I, you'll probably be on YouTube. You were very polite. Thank you for answering my questions. Yeah. All right. You have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, that's about all I knew to ask the Navy. Um, they're doing tests over us, and in Idaho, as you heard, and in other places. Um, I, I got as much as I could out of them. I don't know how much um, I did get out of them. But anyway, uh, I'm going to stop this now. You can give me your humble opinion below. Um, what do you think? Because it's not just happening here. It just was caught here in a legal notice in the newspaper. And um, by the way, um, just real quick on the newspaper, Sound Publishing just bought out all the local newspaper. It's owned by a, a newspaper called the Black Press. And uh, so Sound Publishing is owned by the Black Press. I think that's up in um, Canada also. I will leave the links to that. So they're buying out all the little newspapers. Once this got caught, I believe it got caught in a legal um, notice, which was implied consent. See, once they put it out there, it's given you, they've given, you've given your implied consent unless you complain. Well, people are complaining, so this may have to stop. This is testing, like I said, and as I showed you, I've been trying to scroll through here. Um, they're using um, all kind of stuff here. So anyway, um, I'm going to let you go, let you check out the links. There's several of them. And uh, they're doing it over where I live. They're probably doing it where you live, too. Um, <clears throat> I hope everyone has a good day. Linda Little Bear is out.